All right, let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by taking a look at the overall structure of the VI. We have two process loops and they operate in parallel. And we can use local variables to communicate between these two loops. We call this interprocess communications. So we have three, three examples of that in this VI. Let's take a look at process loop number one. The feedback node keeps track of the state of fast counter and it's also indicated on the front panel. That value is fed back around and the normal path is to increment by one on each loop iteration, but when reset is active, it sets it back to zero. Reset is originally created in process loop number two. The slow counter state increments whenever the fast counter value is equal to 10. Otherwise, it just maintains the present value. The stop button on the front panel is located here, and a local variable is used to communicate that information to process loop number two. Let me show you how to make a local variable place the local variable, and then select the desired front panel control or indicator. Local variables require a front panel control or indicator. You can change the read-write mode so that you can either read the local variable or you can write to it. And finally, each loop is paced at an iteration time of 100 milliseconds per iteration. Let me wrap up by showing you how to stop both loops from the same stop button. The stop button is read by process loop number one, and when that goes true, the loop stops. The local variable has gone true as well, and then process loop number two stops. At this point, the false value is written out to the stop variable, and that resets the button. I need to point out that the mechanical action must be one of the switching types as opposed to the latching type, which is the default when you first place that stop button.